theme that we're going to address for today is digitalization for social economic growth, which is to be discussed by Dr. Sirifo Sise. Mr. Sise, Dr. Sise, you are welcome on okay. board, please. Thank you very much, Jibo. And um, I'll take this opportunity to um, thank the team for um, organizing this event. So I'll just go straight to the point, you know, considering that time is going quite fast. So um, first, I'll just give a brief um, kind of explanation as to what, what digitization is and how can it help um, the Gambia to move forward in, you know, in the di digital space. So basically, digitization is um, the process of converting um, information, which can be text or pictures or sound into some digital form. So that is the basic, basic definition. But through digitization, we can have, um, um, for example, digital transformation of our systems, automation that, um, automation. And um, then after that, I think we could, we could, we could get a lot of uh, brownies um, from digitization. So, for example, um, the main goal of digitization is to enable computers to um, process this data for that. So this could be text. So you have textbooks that you can digitize and you can have them in um, digitized form and you can then be able to share these textbooks or um, photos that you can also digitize and then share audio audios that you can also digitize and share and data from census as well so um so but aside from digitization we also have a digital transformation so um, digital transformation is basically the process of um, using these digital technologies to create new or improve business products and services. I think this byproduct of digitization is, is what is much more important because at the end of the day, what you want to do is you want to convert your manual processes. If you digitize them, then you can use digital transformation to transform how your business run or how government um governments operate so but why do we even need digital transformation or digitization in the first place so um digital information can easily be stored processed and shared let's let's have an example if if i have a letter that i want to um send to someone in base one way of doing this is type the letter print it or write the letter print it out and post it or give it to someone to deliver it. But if this is digitized, we can use digital technologies, for example, email to um, send this across. So, so we can see that um, it can enable us to do things fast. In the medical sector, let's say you need to take an X-ray of an individual and send it to a, a specialist somewhere. So let's say this hospital is in Soma and you take an X-ray, but there is no specialist in SOMA who can translate this information. You can digitize it and then send it to a specialist in Banjul to have a look at it and um, get it back to, um, and, and, and trans translate the information back to uh, the nurses and the doctors in SOMA to uh, act upon that. Um, so data can also be manipulated to make better, better decisions. So um, again, using the example of x-rays, you, you, you can, if you have so many x-rays, you can, kind of use machine learning um, approaches to um, process them and train them and help doctors understand better, um, uh, um, understand how to diagnose that particular basis. So um, also di digitization would eventually or would also save money in the sense that you don't have to uh, um, uh, be printing a lot of papers and stuff like that, and it would also um, save the environment as well. So it would also increase operational efficiencies, as I've explained before. So revenue could also grow in some aspect in the business sector, and operational efficiencies in the sense that we are we are going to cut this middleman aspects. For example, in the Gambia, if certain um, kind of um, documentation. If you need them, you have to go through um, some middlemen, which can kind of um, slow the process of of issuing that particular documentation. So I understand that there are um, 
digital ways of doing um, things, for example, the digital badge certificate, but we need to do more of this. So the digitization can also give us new markets um, of innovation. So what are some of the key technologies um, to support digital transformation? Uh, so digital, um, for example, some of the key technologies would be like digital citizenship identity. So our ID cards, our um, driving license, our uh, birth certificates, most of these documentation documentations could be um, digitized. So digital government technology platform, the entire government processes, if not the entire government processes, but a lot of them should be digitized so that it will give um, citizens, you know, a very easy way to access government, uh, government services. Simple things like paying your tax, uh, paying your tax, paying your bills, now it bills and stuff like that. So, and also um, another key technology underpinning digital transformation would be, um, let's say hybrid uh, cloud computing. Um, uh, cloud computing is basically a process of just having to run your um, workloads somewhere other than on premises but um, hybrid in the sense that there are certain sensitive information that you don't want to, to put on the cloud, you want to have them. And the advantage of using um, the cloud is because of its availability, scalability, and although there are privacy concerns, but like I said, you can have a private one with um, a public one. So another um, key technology underpinning digital transformation is um, data sharing. So you can be able to share data between um, different um, institutions. For example, now we can use data um, from citizens from the immigration department when you apply for a meter or, um, yeah. So local councils can also use data from physical planning for um, proper planning. So we cannot do all of these things in the Gambia at the moment because we have not digitized our, our, our processes that much or we, yeah. So, yeah, it's not all about um, the goods, we also have to talk about some of the challenges of digitization. So as I said to mention, there are so many siloed systems in the Gambia. So um, so silo, silos exist across government. So how do we put these things into an integrated system? So also some of the challenges to uh, some of the challenges of um, digital, of course, going uh, to realize digital transformation is um, risk or culture. So sometimes certain people are just comfortable in what they're doing and they just don't want to change. So that affects us a lot. And I think one of the main thing that I will also mention is the digital skill gap. So there needs to be expert in such area, cybersecurity, cloud computing analytics. So to make sure once these systems are built, they would not just be built by some experts out there and um, it would, the continuity would not be um, certain. So, uh, and, I, and I understand that this is difficult for um, most government, but with the right training, this, this would not be, the University of the Gambia is there and it's obviously, um, there is computer science, there is computer engineering. So uh, we should be able to do this if we make it a priority. So in conclusion, I would say, um, I would recommend this idea called digital by default, which helps government deliver its services. So if government is building some new services for um, its citizens, it has to put digitization in the center. How can we digitize this so that the first thing that citizens would do is to go to our portal or our web portal and try to find information. So this could help cop a lot of things, for example, corruption at various, various levels. So if you try to get a passport now, if you want to get it quick, we know in Gambia what you have to do to get it quick. But if, if we have a system out there, then that can definitely prevent that. You, are, you, you just have to go to that portal and renew your passport and get, it, it will, um, they will send it to you based on the um, processes that, that we have. Okay, I understand that we're getting a lot of breaks from my end. I hope um, I just, because I just saw that message now.
so it also help um citizens okay two minutes i would i would do i would finish before the end of the two minutes so it also helps citizens to be more productive and innovators can thrive um has some challenges as i discussed but um these challenges can be um addressed so there has to be political support for this government has to lead and also investors um, and innovators should also um, take the lead in uh, bringing, um, in helping the Gambia realize it, its digitization goals. And addressing skills gap, as I've, as I've mentioned, the University of the Gambia is there, the com computer science, um, the School of Computer Science is there, which is graduating a lot of um, graduates. And also, it has to be part of the core of our education system as well. So, so yeah, so I'll conclude by saying that digitization can definitely help us to um, improve the socioeconomic condition of our country. And, um, and I think it should not be difficult to do if we work together or if government may, may make it as part of um, its main policies. So, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll conclude my talk here and thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, um, Dr. Sifu Sise. Thank you for that uh, great insight into digitizing for social economic um, growth in the Gambia. Um, you've mentioned about certain things. The line was not very clear from your end, but there are a few things that I could pick from your discussion that um, in the process of digitizing for economic growth, there are certain things that government need to put in place. And you've also highlighted the challenges which include changes that certain people want to continue doing the old ways that they do. Uh, digital skills are required, which you say the University of the Gambia is there to provide and also political support and um, also the deed for investors to invest in those areas. Um, just to ask, um, what fundamental elements of the digital economy must the Gambia government address if it is to accelerate social economic growth, Doctor? So, in my opinion, I think um, the top on top of the on the top of the list is the infrastructure. So currently. Um, the internet, because if you're talking about digitizing things and accessing them through the internet, so there has to be stable internet and affordable internet everywhere. And um, also electricity is another thing. So I talked about having public and private cloud. If we're going to have private cloud, then there has to be um, stable electricity where servers would be on like 99.999% kind of um, um, the, the time. So that's that's one thing. The, the infrastructure is quite um, crucial. And also um, the other thing would be um, the government has to take the lead. The government has to say, look, we are, we are going away from this um, manual way of doing things. All our hospitals, we are going to roll out. Um, um, we are going to digitize all our hospitals. We are going to digitize our education system. And then so if if the government takes the lead, we will definitely go in there. So. Um, I, I, I can give you a short story. Before, um, uh, Nisrat Senior Secondary School, they used to have this manual way of doing things. But at the end, like when you're applying for a place there, you must have to go through their portal to apply. And that has changed things. So no one was calling Mr. Bojang to say, okay, Mr. Bojang, can you please help my son get entry into Nisrat? Yeah, he will tell you, you have to go through the portal. And if you enter your grades, and if it doesn't match, there are minimum requirements. You are automatically rejected. So, um, so we could also uh, do that at, 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 at different levels of our government. So basically, we have to start with the basics. A unified, um, for example, government digital services. We have a digital service office um, ministry, uh, and they are trying to do their best um, to kind of um, change things in the country. But I said, I'm, I may use this opportunity to tell you that I've tried to access your website twice. Um, I think few weeks ago and today, but the website is not running. I don't know why. So um, stability is another thing. So um, I would say infrastructure and government has to take the lead. And let's start with the basics and fix those basics first. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sirifo Sise. The next question I have is how must the Gambia overcome obstacles to become a digital nation? Please, can you just summarize? We are running yes. out of time. Yes. So, so I'll put that in two words. So digital by default, if you are building new systems, let's put digitization at its, at, at its core and innovators and investors must also um, play their role. For example, I don't think there is any, um, I would say, Biran can correct me if I'm wrong, but there is any reliable e-commerce system in the Gambia, just like we have in the UK, like eBay, Amazon. I think those ones are quite a big huge investment, but we can have our own Gambian eBay, even if it is going to be half of what, uh, or, 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 or a very small percentage of what eBay or Amazon can do. But it may be there, but I'm not privy of that. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sisi. I have a supplementary question, and this is coming from um, Abdu, uh, Dr. Abdul Karim Jalo. Dr. Jalo, do you have any question for um, Dr. Sisi, please? Um, maybe very briefly. Dr. Jalo, can you hear me? Time. Yes, can you hear me? Dr. Karim. Yes. Yes, I can, can you hear me? You. Do you have any question for him, please? Yes, very quickly. Um, Dr. Sise, if if we are to digitize um, any of the processes or data in the Gambia, uh, on top of your head, which area would you recommend to be uh, a priority? I would I would definitely go with the hospitals. I would I would start with that and and maybe beside that is payment the way we do payments in the country that Biran is going to talk about. So hospitals and payment systems, because with payment, we can have money is going to move quite fast, which is going to be good for our economy. And for the hospitals, it is going to kind of improve our um, health facilities. So you go to Banjul, you go to Basse, you go to Soma, wherever you go, you will have your medical records there, which is quite important. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sise, uh, for that uh, wonderful discussion. Um, Dr. Karim Jala, thank you for that questions that you've just um, asked, Dr. Sise. Now, the next. Uh,